Right, just going to put together a little video on one of my other projects uh, that I build. This is an ADSB uh, radar beacon for aircraft. It's got a little stubby antenna on the back. Nothing on the front. Don't need any display. Uh, around the back there is an aerial and that is if you find it on here somewhere it is displayed um it's 1090 megahertz so it's just over one gig uh one gig antenna on the back that is what uh aircraft radar needs to use in western europe in america it's nine nine oh nine i think it is megahertz uh but we're slightly different so that is all you need is the antenna power input antenna i will take the lid off and i'll show you inside one of my adsb radar beacons coming back on the next one okay we're back with part two just going to take the lid off and this is what is inside right we've got a raspberry pi uh, i'm just using an old pi 2 uh, that's why i've got the dongle in there and over the back is the power input with the uh, diode on there and there's a book converter uh, to drive the display and then there is the uh, ADSB dongle you can use some other dongles this uh, just the RTL uh, SDR RTL dongle but I found it's not very sensitive and then that comes out and then goes round to the antenna I am going to put a ADSB filter in there uh, to filter out all the unwanted signals which will make it even more uh, sensitive so there's not a great deal in it uh, just needs a bit of thought really so this is the main part I've mounted that up high to get it all in uh, it's very very tight in the box and I mean tight um, it's raised up on some pegs and um, what I've done is uh, uh, the peg goes through the velcro and then the velcro just straps it together so that is it i'll come back with the display and go through the display a little bit with you okay we now moved over to the uh, setup page and your statistics if you click on the little cogwheel there you can set up your height and your details your longitude and latitude which i've put in my bit here and once you've done, you will get the three green bars on there saying that you're running your PiWare, your FlightAware and your MLAT system. And you're logged on to the ADSB system. And it tells you, it'll ask you where your local airport is and you put all that in. My nearest airport is the Leicester one, EGBG. And um, 10 metres above sea level. Uh, sorry, 10 metres high above ground level because I've got it on top of my roof. So you put in all your details and then you get a daily, weekly and monthly graph of how well you've been doing. Obviously you can see through the night hours, there's not many plane flights uh, from sort of 11 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning. It dies off and you get a map of how hot your aerial is. Mine still needs to be put right, so it's very direction around here. There's not a great deal going north at the moment, but that'll get soon sorted out when I put, when I put the proper um, collinear up. And you get a graph of uh, how active you've been throughout the day, uh, how, much, how much aircraft have pinged off your system. And there is another one moved down a bit further. This is the one, uh, your tally count. I'm normally around about 2,400 flights uh, uh, using my system a day. Uh, if you go all the way through the system, depending on what day of the week it is. At the moment, it's now half past one in the afternoon. I'm at 1,646. That goes up a bit further. And then you, um, out of all of the ADSB systems in the world, and bear in mind there are quite a few, you start off at about 24,000. I am at currently, get that in chat, I'm at uh, 2,178 on scoreboard. So I'm doing quite well considering this is a home job and not a professional one. Um, yeah, it's a homey job. I'm normally hovering around the 2,000 mark. So out of nearly 30,000, uh, 2,000 is quite a good score. Once I get that aerial up on the roof done properly, 
that will go up significantly and you get all the tally score on there and then if we move on over to the next part I will explain a bit more right I've moved on over to the coal face uh, as, a, as it is and at the moment I've got 85 aircraft with 60 using my ADS-B transponder for their positioning and that's what I've got at the moment very interesting watching uh, the aircraft particularly around here in the daytime uh, around uh, where you got the Lakenhill, Heath, Mildenhall, Marham when military aircraft fly in civil aviation airspace they must activate their ADS-B transponder, a part of CAA's uh, rules and conditions, whatever. So you do get to see the military aircraft flying around and around uh, the Welsh mountains as well. Quite interesting. But then you have a rundown down here of all the aircraft that are using my beacon at the moment. And there is quite a lot. Now it's, it, it's quite interesting because these aircraft, it's hard to imagine these aircraft are using your system. Uh, they're using triangulation from three or more uh, ADS-B transponders to get an accurate reading of their location. And they can do all the same. They get a three-dimensional graph uh, of uh, where everything is these days. If I just touch on that uh, aircraft there, you'll be able to see all the details of it. Uh, but they, instead of the old-fashioned radar where it was just a blip, they can see everything about uh, aircraft when they look out the window. Most aircraft now fly with a tablet uh, on their dashboard. You'll see EasyJet pilots have got a uh, tablet on the dashboard and they're pulling everything off my transponders and everybody else's transponders. So it's a very, very interesting system, it really is. And a great project for guys to build, particularly on amateur radio, because you're using an aerial, you're using RF, and it's, it's a good project to do, so um, go ahead and try it and enjoy it. Seven threes.